This is a truly great event in the Russian aviation industry, and it is even more valuable against the background of the ban on the supply, repair and maintenance of Western passenger airplanes. Civil aircraft construction is the most complex civil engineering field. At the moment, only two companies in the world can mass-produce modern passenger airplanes, the American Boeing and the European Aerobus. Boeing has officially banned deliveries of its airplanes to Russia for 20 years. If both companies at once not only impose blocking sanctions on the supply and maintenance of their airplanes, but also prohibit their operation, it very much undermines the national economy, logistics and air traffic. In the case of Russia, such sanctions violate the connectedness of our country, for there is no other way to get from one end of Russia to the other as quickly except by airplane. This is what the Western sanctions were designed for. On top of that, the US has literally imposed sanctions against all Russian aircraft manufacturing companies that have at least minimal competencies in the field of national aircraft manufacturing. Under the blocking sanctions were the Avanford Design Bureau of Special Machine Building, the Vyardin firm, the Ishhesk Unmanned Systems Research and Production Association, Avangard, the Titan Barricades Federal Research and Production Center, the Klimov UDC, the Kolomna Machine Building Design Bureau Research and Production Corporation, the Solovatsky Chemical Plant, the Central Research Institute of Automation and Hydraulics, the Novosibirsk Aircraft Repair Plant Kavant, Gagarin Aviation Plant, Kurganmosh Plant in Komsomolska on Amur, Loktopark Premium, Loktoplaza, Nemchinovo Investments, OSTOZHENK019, Akademischen Mikhaev State Rocket Center, Sokol Aircraft Plant in Nizhny Novgorod, ODK Saturn, Okriti Assets, ODK Kuznetsov, ODK Ufa Engine Building Production Association, Radio Automatica LLC, Planer, ZARECHYE4, All Russian Research Institute of Aviation Materials and Altitude X3 Company. At the same time, this company is offshore, legally located in Bermuda, that is, in the economic zone of the UK, but the US decided to sanction it. Just in case. Which is to say, it was not enough for the English speakers to ban us from operating their Boeings and Airbuses, they wanted to eliminate Russian aircraft manufacturing in principle. The whole point is that even Americans and Europeans are not capable of producing airplanes on their own. For example, the share of American components in the most modern American airliner Boeing 787 Dreamliner is less than 50%. This American Dreamliner is literally made up of components sourced from Canada, England, Sweden, Italy, France, Japan, South Korea, Australia and China. And the titanium alloys from which the body elements are made are delivered from Russia. Here is an example of parts made in Russia for the Airbus A320. Creating a full import independent passenger airplane is virtually impossible in today's world. It would seem that the Chinese, who are masters at copying everything, could have come up with something in the field of civil aircraft construction. But even they have not succeeded so far. Beginning in 2008, China's Comic developed the C919 family of national narrow body medium haul passenger airplanes, which were to become the pride of China's aircraft industry. The issue here is that this airplane was to be built entirely from Chinese components, including the use of Western components manufactured in mainland China. In 2013, it became clear that such ambitious plans were simply not feasible. Therefore, Western partners were involved in the construction of the C919 airplane. In the end, it took the Chinese 15 years just to build a completely their own airplane. The only Chinese things about this airplane are the airframe, tail, wings, and radar fairing. Everything else is Western, including the most important components of the engine and avionics. As a result, the share of imported components in the national Chinese airplane was simply huge. Why couldn't the Chinese, with their advanced industry, build their own airplane without the participation of Western partners? Obviously, this is simply not possible. It's not only the ability to produce, but also previous experience in building similar airplanes that matters. China has no such experience, so they are not capable of simply copying an airplane. After the Chinese comrades understood the essence of the problem, they tried to involve Russia in the joint development of a wide-body airplane, the most complex type of passenger aircraft. In 2014, Russia and China signed a cooperation agreement to develop a new County Route 929 wide-body airplane to directly compete with the Boeing 787 and Airbus 350. The joint development was well underway, allowing the cockpit look to be shown as early as 2019. Here's a full-size mock-up of this cabin. However, the Chinese then demanded from Russia the transfer of key technologies for building wide-body aircraft, including the technology for building the PD-35 engine, promising in return the Russian side profits from the joint project in the key Chinese market. The Chinese market demand is estimated at 1,200 boards. The Russian side reacted extremely negatively to such demands, 
especially considering the fact that initially Russia and China participated in the project on equal terms and with equal financing. China, having realized that Russia was not eager to transfer technology to it, began to attract Western partners to the project without the consent of the Russian side. In June 2023, Russia finally withdrew from the project, refusing to transfer technology to China. COMAC has decided to introduce further development in-house with Western partners, providing a picture at the Paris Le Berg International Airshow 2023 of the new COMAC white body, development of which will begin in 2024. This aircraft is a copy of the Russian Chinese County Route 929. The sanctions imposed hit the safety of Boeing and Airbus flights in Russia, and this is an objective fact. Thus, since the beginning of 2023, the Russian aviation industry has experienced at least seven incidents with airplanes, including the newest Airbus A320neo, one of which failed to fly to Moscow from Bratsk due to a toilet system malfunction. And of the most high profile, it was the emergency landing of an Airbus A320 at Wheatfield near Novosibirsk due to a hydraulic system failure. It is not difficult to predict what the future holds for Russia. The Iranian scenario is in front of my eyes. Iran too has been banned from purchasing, maintaining and operating Boeings and Airbuses for over 30 years. Despite buying parts from the aftermarket to maintain the oldest aircraft fleet, more than 210 airplanes have crashed during the sanctions period, killing more than 2,000 people, according to official figures. There is no point in repeating Iran's sad experience. Russia should have its own aircraft industry. It's vital to us because of the vast distances between cities. And there have already been some successes in this area. Thus, a new modification of the Suhoi Superjet new with a 97% share of Russian components will go into production next year. The airliner will receive domestic PD-8 engines, which will replace the French-Russian SAM-146 engines. Production has also begun on the modernized Tu-214, the first copies of which are being added to the fleet of Red Wings and Aeroflot airlines. The share of domestic components in the Tu-214 is about 87%, and by the beginning of 2025 it will be brought to 100%, including fully domestic avionics, the development of which is engaged in the Institute of Aviation Instrument Construction, Navigator, JSC, Aviaprabor, and Concern Radio Electronic Technology. The modernized TU-214 is completing tests and will go to its first customers as early as 2024. The airplanes are equipped with domestic PS-90A engines. The MS-21310 aircraft with domestic PD-14 engines is in the process of finalizing certification. There are currently 12 airplanes in production, seven of which have already been assembled. They are equipped with domestic systems and units. In 2024, testing of a fully import-substituted version of the Mississippi-21 aircraft should begin. Airlines will receive the first six production aircraft. The Mississippi-21 is a direct competitor to the latest Boeing 737 MAX and Aerobus A320neo. Let me remind you that the MC-21 made its first flight on May 28, 2017. Realizing that Russia was doing quite well in the development of the MS-21, in September 2018, the United States imposed a complete ban on imports into Russia of American and Japanese composite materials used to make the wings of Russian aircraft. It turns out that the free market only exists when the interests of American companies are unaffected. They don't need competition. Such sanctions have delayed aircraft production for several years. However, on July 14, 2021, the docking of the wing console with the fuselage of the MC-21300 aircraft was performed already from Russian composite materials manufactured at the Aerocomposite Ulanovska Enterprise. Japanese and American composites, which until recently had no analogues in the world, are now produced in Russia. Russia became one of the three countries in the world capable of producing the required strength composites used in civil aviation. According to the plan, 63 airliners, 18 MS-21s, 34 Suhoi Superjet Nu and 11 Tu-214s will be purchased and delivered by 2026. By 2030, 270 Mississippi 21-310S, 142 Suhoi Superjet Nu and 72 Tu-14s. In addition, According to the Comprehensive Program for the Development of the Air Transport Industry approved by the government in 2022, up to 2030, 12 units of wide-body long-haul passenger aircraft IL-96-300 should be delivered. It was the technology of IL-96-300 construction that Chinese specialists tried to get hold of, offering Russia such joint development conditions that it was decided to say goodbye to the promising project of building a wide-body long-range airplane of the new generation County Route 929. However, the development of wide-body airplanes in Russia continues. Thus, on November 1, 2023, the prototype of the IL-96-400M wide-body long-haul aircraft made its maiden flight. The Illinois 96-400M is a deeply modernized version of the IL-96-300. 
It features a fuselage lengthened by 9 meters 35 centimeters, more powerful PS90A1 engines and a capacity of up to 370 passengers. The most significant thing here is that this is the first airplane in Russia, and in the world, entirely made of domestic components. The first flight opens a series of test flights of a new line of civil aircraft in the wide body segment and will fully cover Russia's needs in all types of airliners. The development and production of the Illinois 96-400M flight model allowed us not only to preserve but also to increase our competencies in the segment of wide-body airliners. Only three aircraft construction centers in the world can build wide-body airliners and one of them is in Russia. And here is a photo of the aircraft commander Sergei Sukar, honored test pilot of Russia, after a successful test flight. Of course, no company in the world today is capable of developing a new wide-body airplane by one country. The Boeing B-787 Dreamliner and Aerobus A-350 are clear evidence of this. Moreover, such an airplane needs a new engine capable of reliably replacing four PS90A1s with two advanced ultra-long thrust engines. The development of such an engine should be completed by 2030. By this time all conditions for serial production should be created in Russia. Development of the PD-35 Russia's advanced twin-circuit turbofan engine with an ultra-large thrust of up to 38 tons, began in 2016. This engine is a next-generation engine, and if all goes according to plan, by 2030 there will be the world's first fifth-generation ultra-large thrust turbofan engine. The IL-96-400M is not only capable of safely replacing the departed Boeings and Airbuses, but will also be the starting point for the creation of a new generation wide-body airplane. I would not be surprised if the Chinese decide to cooperate with Russia in this direction again, especially after the ever-increasing sanctions pressure from the United States. In fact, the Chinese very much did not want Russia to withdraw from this project. You can see this from their media publications, which are written as if they are trying to take Russia for a ride. If Russia withdraws from the project, it will not affect it in any way, but at the same time Russia will not have the technology and means to independently create such an airplane. Basically, the Chinese are panicking. Well yeah then we can't build an elephant heavy transport plane either. According to the Chinese logic, then there is no need for us to make PD-35 as well, because why should we? Apparently they took great offense.